Yo, welcome back. Today we'll be doing part three of the Know Your Laws uh, series that we've been doing for the past, uh, I guess, like a month and a half now. I believe there's probably going to be one more uh, little video after this one. Uh, these were all filmed together, so this is just a little intro. Um, but I did want to reach out and say thank you all who commented on the audio issues that we were having. I believe I got it fixed. Uh, it was a DaVinci Resolve issue on the firmware update. It reset my audio channels to uh, from stereo. Before we get started, let's thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Uh, if you guys do not know who PCBWay is, they make awesome PCB uh, projects uh, from uh, schematics to your Gerber files to an actual tangible board like this logic analyzer right here. That is by L. Dr. Gusman. This is the uh, newest version. And then if you guys uh, remember that we also did the KV4PHT, uh, that is another PCBWay project. These are all open source projects that are out there on GitHub. You can download a lot of the files and upload them to PCBWay and then kind of create your own uh, boards. You can change some of the colors, like, you know, I believe the original color on this one was black and I did white uh, and black. Uh, they have the newer version of the KV4P HT on their shared projects. I believe they also have this little radio that you've seen around, uh, quite a little popular radio. These are just kind of examples of things that you can do with PCBWay. Um, they make your ordering super simple. The communication is always on par, in my opinion. Oh, and don't forget to use the uh, link in the description below for a discount off of PCBWay's projects, whether that's a shared project, whether that's your own uh, schematic uh, to Gerber file to an actual board. Um, you can use that site wide. So again, thank you PCBWay for all your support. I appreciate it. And let's get back to part three of Know Your Laws. Uh, flying. I just got back from a trip and I took with me my H4M and my Flipper Zero and I went through TSA with not a single issue. I also was able to do some ADS-B receiving in flight, which I did a little short on, and that was really cool to do. But I got a lot of comments. I knew that they were coming, but a lot of them were, how did you get that on a plane? The SEC isn't really looking, the FAA isn't really, the TSA isn't really looking for devices as such. The Flipper Zero is FCC certified. If you turn it over here in the back, the Portapack Mayhem, uh, this version, I don't really know if it is or not, but don't transmit on things that you're not legal to transmit on, right? And then again, don't transmit in flight. Um, that's pretty much a no-brainer, I would hope. But going into TSA um, and getting past their security, if you will, with a Flipper Zero. All I did was I had it in my front pocket. I threw it on the little basket with my phone. I threw it on there with my wallet, my belt, and my watch, and I threw my hat over it, and it sent it through. And from there, the gal or the, the dude behind the screen scanned it. Not a question was asked when it came through. I then took it off and then put it all back in my pocket. No questions asked. Now, if you take it and you put it on your basket, I recommend, because you don't know that a TSA agent, yes, they are approved to go on TSA, but there's always going to be that one guy that may be like, you know what, that's a flipper zero. I've seen bad things because of that, so I'm not going to let it on my, you know, go. Or I want it, and I'm going to confiscate it. So what you can do is you can put it in a basket, take your sweater off, take your hat off, put it over it, and then send it through. That way it only goes through the person that's viewing the monitor. And then when it comes out, you have the basket. You can then take it out, put it back in your pocket with minimal exposure to the device. Um, the same goes for the H4M. Now the H4M is more uh, nonchalant looking because not, not a lot of people know what it is. And if you were to, you know, say have a quick BNC connector like I do and take it off, well, it looks like a gaming system or a MP3 player. And the cool thing on the H4M is that you can then take your actual old school headphones and plug them in to the unit and then just wrap it up like such and then throw it on the conveyor or in a basket and it looks like an MP3 player. And if they ask you, it's like, yeah, my MP3 player, my gaming system. 
they ask about what these little things are. Oh, it's just a system to plug into a computer for, you know, radio, radio frequency uh, tuning and nerd talk them, you know. And you're going to probably bore the person that's asking you and they're, okay, you know, whatever, you know, send it through. But in my experience, I did not get flagged by any means for taking my Flipper Zero or the H4M uh, onto a plane. You know, nobody better than I at it. Now, on my ADS-B short that I did, the flight attendant didn't even care. Um, but if they do ask, like, what are you doing? You could say, you know, hey, I'm an airplane and radio enthusiast. I am just monitoring and I'm just checking and flight tracking, you know, because a lot of that stuff is available as it is from your phone. For instance, if you have a flight and you punch in your flight number, so you weigh, you know, United Airlines, you know, 55112, and you send that to a, a family or a friend, and just those numbers, your phone now, you can tap on that number and it shows you your flight and path. So that this information is nothing hidden that's going on with, you know, with what you're doing. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just what you choose to do with the information uh, if you are on the transmitting side of things that I would be um, kind of apprehensive about and know what you're doing. I hope that makes sense. But again, I didn't have any issues with my Flipper Zero or the Porta Pack H4M going in the, going on a flight. If you're going overseas, if you're, or, or or if you're leaving the U.S., I don't know how those TSA personnel are going to act towards that. So use your own discretion at that. Um, you cannot check these in in the in your luggage though because of the batteries. Fly at your own risk if you're going out of the U.S. with your Flipper Zero or your H4M or H2. All right, this concludes the part three of Know Your Laws and uh, all that we have learned together for the Portback Mayhem, H4M, H2, and Order Flipper Zero, and similar devices. This has been a learning experience for, for myself, and I hope that you guys have also learned from this. Um, I wanted to make this series because, again, we had a lot of people from various Discord servers and channels reaching out um, or just not knowing uh, the the legalities of owning such a device. Um, this is just to keep you guys safe and to make this a learning environment for all of us. And hopefully you guys walk away with more knowledge and or the drive to go and get your uh, technician license, your general license, or further your education in the ham radio SDR field of, of what we can do together. So again, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate your time and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do that fun stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.